All right, I'm back with a different camera. Can you guys hear me now? Check, one, two, check, check, one, two. You buy the best equipment. Matt, am I back? All right, sorry about that. You know, I spent $100 on this damn video camera and what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Brap, brap, brap. How's that? All right. Well, let's see what uh, Mrs. Goat has for me in store tonight in the um, Gray Goat gas can. Hold on. Oh, look. I've got a nice little bunny. Isn't that sweet? I love bunnies. Whoa, okay, I'm down. Oh, look in my Easter basket. And OMB Kool-Aid. Isn't that great? Well, listen, you guys. You guys all think I drink the OMB Kool-Aid, and I do, okay? It, it is fresh and delicious. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm let me grab another cup here, and I'll prove to you that the OMB Kool-Aid is a clear liquid okay clear liquid all right so i just drink water during these shows because i don't want to be impaired so are you guys ready to play quizzo no not vodka i don't like vodka i'm not a, i'm not hey trinic in the house what's up brother okay so you like my bunny ears those are sweet right I love those. We are live. You know, I took my kid on a road trip one time and uh, put a roll of tinfoil in the car. We made tinfoil hats um, for our ride to Los Angeles when I lived in Northern California. And um, nobody will look at you going down the road if you wear a tinfoil hat. Guaranteed. All right, you guys ready for Quizzo? Let's get it on. Mo Trinick is Tim. Tim Coughlin, he's a, he's a badass engine builder um, out of New York. What are you, Pine Plains or something, Maple Street or something? Yeah, sorry, Tim. Um, okay, so we're, we're back. We're going to wait a minute on the questions. Let's get back to the clutch. And you guys, nah, just messing with you. <laughs> so anyway. Once these clutches lock up and you're engaged and you're going, this acts as one solid unit. Might as well be a rock at that point. So the bushing's not going to wear down, overheat, or anything. But periodically, take your clutch apart and service it. Um, don't use brake cleaner on these. Don't use carb cleaner on these. Um, for the inside of the drum, use WD-40. When the shoes get worn down, just take some fine sandpaper. Hit, hit it with some, some 400 grit. Don't make any flat spots, but just not, knock any glazing off, off that. This is a fairly new clutch. It's only hauled my, uh, my large derriere around for just a little bit, so it doesn't need any work to it. But um, pull that clutch apart, and even the max torque clutches. I've got one. I've already taken the snap ring off. This clutch has been through the war. And you'll notice on the inside of the Max Torque, there's a bronze bushing here. Um, that bronze bushing can be oiled through this side of the clutch. Just a couple drops of oil in there. Lift up your back tire, spin it a little bit, get this going, get the oil all around there. And that will help that bushing last a long time. Like I say, this clutch has um, been through the war. Uh, I believe this was on a two-stroke engine and uh, it still has the silver spring in it. So that tells me that it wasn't... Uh, properly set up for a two-stroke, but it has a stepped hub on it. So I'm thinking for like a West Bend, but you, you'll see the play in that bushing right there. And that's what happens. No oil on that, no service, you know, let's keep it outside in the rain. And um, that, that will allow that clutch to just destroy itself. So a little bit of oil goes a long way. Um, I use 30 weight. Why, why not? It, it's in your engine or 1030 weight. 
um, the big thing with the clutch is don't use synthetic products on it. Um, anything um, with Teflon, especially, or the other lawn, I forget which one. Um, but anything like that, it can leach into the metal of the drum. And if you get Teflon that has leached into the drum, you can't get it off. Uh, you can sand and sand and sand, but it'll it'll keep dispersing that once it gets hot. So your best bet, use 1030 or 30 weight oil. That's all it takes on that bushing. It's real easy. Um, you know, with the uh, with the two piece design of the Hilliard clutches, the Extreme Duty line. You know, this uh, there's a snap ring on the outside here. I had that off because I didn't want to see have you guys watch me fumble with the snap ring pliers. Got them off first time, of course, because I wasn't on camera, like getting a damn flywheel key out. So with, with that, you just need to uh, keep it lubricated. So pull it apart, clean it with WD-40, let it ring a little bit, and, that, and that's all you got. Speaking of ringing, so the wife went to Vegas to see Kid Rock over the weekend, and she brought me this back. And it says ring for beer. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. I, I didn't know if, um, well, what the intent was. Didn't think she'd actually get me one. But let's test Mrs. Goat. We'll see what happens. I doubt anything. But, okay, you guys ready to play Quizzo? Because with Quizzo, we're giving away $25. Quizzo bucks. That's right. That's right, Shaggy. We got you covered, Scooby-Doo. So let's get it on. All right, the first question tonight. Uh, back when the taco mini bikes were being made, you know, it's, it's said that uh, somebody had called John Steens uh, as he was out and about and, and asked him, what do we name these things? And he was at a taco stand. He says, name it Taco. So at that point, they needed a logo. So um, Steens was uh, tight with the guys over at Rod and Custom Magazine because Rod and Custom was real big on, on showing mini bikes, and they had a lot of kits in their advertisements back then. So yeah, at that point, he relied on people there. So what Rod and Custom Magazine artist – designed the familiar bean logo for taco mini bikes what rod and custom magazine artist designed the bean logo for taco mini bikes i i, I can take a first name last name or both because that that's going to make you guys be googling right you guys Google. I'm going to drink some OMB Warehouse Kool-Aid. I love Kool-Aid. Or water. Yeah, water. So, what Rod and Custom Artist designed the Bean logo for Taco Mini Bikes? Kevin, no. Nope. It, it, it wasn't Wineland either. And Angelo, it might as well have been Michelangelo. Um, because that, that is a kick-ass logo when you think about how logos are produced today on a computer versus how they were done back then. And, um, yeah, no, Mark, it's not Lynn Wineland. Oh, hey, Simple Tom, where'd you go? Come on, Tom, you know everything. What Rod and Custom Artist designed the Bean logo, you know, the little guy with the sombrero uh, on, on the mini bike? Oh, Mark. Mark Lutz coming in. His name was Donal, or it's D O N A L, Donald Jolly. Donald Jolly was the rod and custom artist that designed the Bean logo. Um, nice, nice grab there, Mark. You're, you're quite the Googler because I know you didn't know that. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's get back. Max Torque clutches. One snap ring on the outside, it'll come apart. Every once, every 12 hours of use, take it apart and get into this bushing, clean it, and oil it. The oil needs to soak in. So, you know, let, let it sit for a couple hours and let it soak into that bronze bushing. 
then then wipe the excess off and then you can reassemble it. We don't want to obviously get oil on the inside here. So the excess part is the bad part. But the good part is that we do oil these things because um, they, they will wear out uh, once that bronze bushing wears, uh, you know, relieves itself of all the oil that uh, is impregnated in it, it, it will start to wear out. And that, that's what will cause these clutches to do this. And gearing is very important. I, uh, I have some sprockets here that we can contrast with. I've got a 40 tooth sprocket and a 50 tooth sprocket. Let's see if I can line those up for you. Huge difference there, right? So, you know, if a guy's running a, a, a big block with a one inch clutch and a 16 tooth sprocket on it, and he's going to a 40, that's not even a three to one ratio. And that, that's what we don't want. But here's the difference between a, a 40 and a 54. Yeah, I had this one powder coated before I knew what to do. I was a rookie back then. I'll admit it. I'm not too proud. So the 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 circumference is huge on that. So it makes a big difference at how you set that up. And that that's one thing that I'm seeing with a lot of the guys that are running torque converters right now. Um, <laughs> Doug, we got a clutch that'll fit. Um, what snaps like crazy? My fingers? That's right. Yeah, Matt, your drag your your drag cart with the 22 clutch and a 53. Yeah, that's that's you know two and a half to one. That uh, it, it is a very tough tough deal. Um, Ian Cordova, um, eighth mile clay oval. Um, Tim can help you with that. Um, for for racing like that, a cheetah clutch is, is the way to go. Um, I've got those in stock. Those come with three drivers, I think 13, 14, 15. Um, and their needle bearing clutch, the, the disc clutch will hold up really well. Um, I've got a lot of uh, Noram clutches that um, will go. Um, if you follow the listing, I've got one of the GE series clutches. Um, the GE series will come with either heavy or light shoes. Um, the, the reason for that is a heavy shoe will engage quicker than a lighter shoe just from the centrifugal force going around. So uh, for a mini bike, I, I would prefer a heavy shoe and uh, don't, don't go with a light shoe just because the, the engagement will be real high. But um, Ian, if you email me help at ombwarehouse.com, um, just say Greg Goat Garage in the subject line, I'll, I'll get the email and then we can discuss your options. Um, we, we've got a ton of clutches in stock right now. Um, and Angelo, if Wolf runs a Chinese clutch, that's great. You know why? Because once it's locked up, it don't matter. So, um, Mike P, good to see you. Um, I, I do have clutches uh, for the 4041 chain. Um, you do get very limited in your options. Um, what I like to do in that instance is um, spec out one of the Noram clutches that has a D-drum where you can use the uh, Buller SMC uh, jammer sprockets. And that way I can get you a, a sprocket that, that will work for you. But um, all right, Tim, see? Cheetah burns up quick. Premier would be better. Yeah, Premier or World Formula. I, I like the World Formula clutch a lot. Um, that, that that's a very solid unit. Um, Nola mini bikes. Joe in the house. Good to see you, brother. Hey, Joe. We're playing Quizzo, man. Jump in for your chance to win twenty-five dollars in OMB Warehouse currency. That's right, Quizzo bucks. Twenty-five dollars. We're we're having a contest here. So. Let's uh, let's get on to the next question. We're we're halfway through. The original Doodle Bug was actually a scooter. Um, so the original Doodle Bug scooter was produced by the Beam Manufacturing Company from 1946 to 1948. I believe they scheduled about 10,000 units uh, per year that they made. Um, but the original Doodle Bug scooter. Produced by the Beam Manufacturing Company from 1946 to 1948, 
was made in what U.S. city? All right. The original Doodlebug scooters were made in what U.S. city? Angela, watch out. I've been helping the NOLA guys. They're, 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 uh, they're ready for you, okay? Yes, they're ready. Izzy is. Mark, you were close. But the nod goes to Mo Trout. Mo, dude, you're getting good at this. So we, we've got um, Mo on the board with Webster City. So Webster City, Iowa is, is where the original Doodlebugs were made. And so we're going to go on to question number three since we already know, uh, we're already on the doodlebug bug subject. The doodlebugs that were produced between 1946 and 1948, they were primarily sold in one store. Clutch stuff on my finger. Name the primary retailer for the doodlebug scooters. Who was the primary retailer for doodlebug scooters? in 1946 to 1948 and probably into 49 with the leftover inventory. So <laughs> Angelo has doo doo bugs. Yes, he does. He can't get rid of them either. He called the exterminator and um, yeah, Angelo Home Depot. Uh, Mark, it wasn't Ward's or Sears, uh, Kevin. Um, and it wasn't Western Auto. Joe, Walmart wasn't even around. So there was one retailer. You'll recognize the name uh, when we say it. Randy Blue coming in with Gambles. or Gambles department store. So we've got a three-way tie or, or, or a three-way tie for last place. E either way, a three-way tie. It was Gambles department store. Sprockets. Here's the difference between a 60 and a 72. You're going to notice that there's a huge difference in the outside radius of that. And I'm, all, all this is going to come to a, 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 fina a finale here um, because I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about something different. We're all concerned. See, there goes that damn bell again, and she didn't even come in she, with my Kool-Aid. Damn it. Um, Doug Jones, a little bit late, but yes, you are correct. Um, Mark, I, I have the official scores on the other end. Um, uh, Victoria, if you could see um, if uh, who got there first on the gambles, um, the contest is rigged. Whatever, dude. Um, and uh, you weren't alive in '49. How young are you, Joe? Okay, let, let's let's get on with this. Everybody always wants to, especially with torque converters. You know, I, I I get this a lot, saying, you know, my my engine gets to a certain RPM and then it just kind of noses over with a torque converter, and I I've got the same situation because my gearing's not right uh, on the on my uh, white bike that uh, was patterned after Rex's, and. When, when I think about that, that was the first bike I ever built. I knew nothing about torque converters. Um, okay, Randy Blue, he does get the gambles. So th thank you, official scorer. <sighs> Come on, Doug, straighten up. So everybody always looks to the rear sprocket first. And to me... Yeah, that that's that's something that in in my naivety five six years ago, yeah, I would have looked at that as well. Um, you know, change change that around. But when I'm having to go from a a, a 54 to a 60, or you know, the, the the stock Murray came with a 76, or it, it's it's huge. It's this big. Hey, did you guys hear about the one armed fisherman? He caught a fish this big. Okay, anyway, dad joke, dad joke, Vic. Um, so 
we can always consider another option. Why don't we change out the sprocket on the torque converter? I've got eight tooth sprockets, uh, nine tooth sprockets for the uh, 40, 41 chain. For the 35 guys, they don't go a lot smaller than 12. It's hard to get that diameter down and still fit over the shaft. But I, I've got, you know, 14s, 15s on the C-type sprocket. For those of you who aren't familiar with a C-type sprocket, um, that, that is a sprocket that has a shoulder on each side and the gears right in the middle. Um, we forgot to pull one out of the Gray Goat uh, garage um, goodie box to show you. But there's a hub on each side, no set screw. It, it really is the correct gear for that whole setup. So in, instead of changing your rear gear ratio, um, and, and especially when you got a hopped up motor and, and a torque converter, let, let's try and think about getting back to that six to one ratio or five and a half. And, you know, we can drop a tooth on the, uh, the output gear. If we're going nine to 54, what was that? Uh, six to one. And, and and we're back. We don't have to change our rear sprocket. We can just change the sprocket on the um, the output behind the driven. So that, that that's an easy deal. One thing that'll do is that'll get you out of the hole harder. And it, it will also allow that, that engine to work, get up into its RPM range, and then you, you'll have more perceived power just because you're not getting to that point where the engine doesn't have enough power to overcome when the driven kicks in. So think think about that. We we've got all those sprockets in in. No, the uh, the eight tooth are are fine for 40 chain, Randy. Um, works with all three 40, 41, 420. Um, if you need a, a dedicated 40 sprocket, they are a little wider. Um, send send me a, a message or, or you can text me. You got my number, so I'll uh, I'll see what's available out there. Um, you know, and that's one thing that we do at ombwarehouse.com. When you email the gray goat at help at ombwarehouse, dude, I'll do whatever I can to help you. You know, I've uh, I, I, I've taken some lumps over there at Mini Bike Nation, and uh, a lot of guys uh, want to be hating on the gray goat over there. But um, I do my best to help everybody. I, I'm not too proud to tell you if I don't have an answer, if I don't have the right product or what you think is the right product. Um, you know, we're all good. Thank you guys for liking us on Facebook. I, I, I appreciate that. Don't forget, like us on Facebook. That, that's important to us. There you go. There you go. Thanks, guys and, and gals. Um, but can consider that a, as an option for you. You know, don't don't necessarily think you need to raise raise the number of, of you know, especially with you big, big chain guys um, with the 4041 chain. Unless you go to a custom sprocket, you're really limited to 40, 54, and 60. That's it. And limited amount of bolt patterns on that too. Um, as you can see, I was doing a, a special bike and I had to re-drill that with a three-hole pattern. So, I mean, that, that was the best I could come up with for that bike until I found the right sprocket. But, um, you know, that, that that is important. So, th thank you, Ange. I appreciate that, sir. Um, uh, we, we'd certainly do our best at ombwarehouse.com to uh, accommodate everybody. It, it does get difficult at times, um, you know, with, with that 68 Yamaguchi and I need a jack shaft and uh, I don't know what size it is, but send me the right one. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we try real hard and uh, we, we do our best to accommodate everybody. Um, well, one thing that, that I've gone to, um, you know, since, since I've um, grown up and out, is I always buy the better chain. Um, well, we're going to talk about this more next week, but um, with the, the RLV chain especially, with, with that chain in particular, it's pre-stretched, and I always buy the space chain. The space chain on a regular sprocket has a little lateral movement like this. So alignment is not as critical because there is a little float on there. And anybody that's ever talked to me about clutches and say, how come it didn't come with set screws? Well, it doesn't come with set screws because I don't want you to use set screws. I want you to put this onto the engine, put a bolt and a large washer through the crank. Oh, your crank's not drilled and tapped? Well, get out the drill and get out the tap and drill and tap it. Um, that will allow that clutch to float a little bit on the shaft. 
and that will help the chain alignment. If you were to, for instance, put a, a sprocket on a jack shaft and take your clutch and put a chain on it, if you spin it enough times, it's going to find out where it wants to be all, all on its own. So, you know, you, you can actually align your chain just by spinning things, and that the, the, the sprocket on the jack shaft is going to move and be lined up with the clutch. Um, just make sure that the sprocket is smooth on the jack shaft. But um, that, that's an easy way to get the chain aligned. Um, I, I've used that several times, and it worked real well. But don't use, don't use set screws on your clutches. If your crank's not drilled and tapped, well, drill and tap it. Come on, you guys know I'm, I'm as dumb as a day is long and certainly not a rocket scientist or, or even a cement scientist. I can't even build a launch pad. But I, I tell you guys, uh, you know, a few tricks here and there. So don't lock your clutches down. Make sure it has a little bit of float on the shaft. Um, you know, would, would like to see 60 thousandths as the max. But, you know, if you, uh, if you have more play than that, have some oddball crank, email me, help at OMB Warehouse. In the subject line, say, hey, Greg, go, I need help. And, and I'll show you the shims that I have uh, for three-quarter inch cranks, and uh, we can get it shimmed up. So it's not a big deal, but um, well, let's do it right the first time and then not have to worry about it. Um, after building one of my bikes with just regular chain, I, I realized at that point that, that the chain – it is designed for mini bikes. Works great when you have a three horsepower engine and you've got a 12 tooth clutch and a 72 tooth rear gear. You're not stressing it. You're not pulling it real hard, and you're 70 pounds because the 70 pound kids are supposed to ride mini bikes, not 300 pound uh, goats, right? So, um, good lord, some angry people here. Um, Mo, you you and I are going to have a little chit chat. Um, yeah, it takes two boxes of gold chain to do one mini bike, okay? But you know you'll you'll go to Tractor Supply and and buy two five foot lengths and um, for twelve dollars each, and then you know at, at that point you're changing them, you're breaking them, you're you're having to resplice them. Don't do that. Just pony up the money right from the start. That's what I've done. Sometimes I cringe when I buy four, five, six boxes of chain because um, it gets uh, <laughs> it, it gets uh, quite expensive. But you know what? Then I never worry about it again. I'm not constantly adjusting the tension. I'm not having to, to do anything. It, it's less prone to skip um, or, or fall off. Um, buy it once, buy it right. And, Mo, we're still going to talk, buddy. Okay. Um, so anyway, let, let's get, uh, did I mention that we're giving away $25 tonight on Quizzo? That's right. Quizzo bucks. Do you like that image on there? I love that. That, that, that's an inside joke. I can't tell you. Okay. All right. You guys ready? We all know the Macrina brothers, right? The little Indian boys, you know, um, when, when their, when their mom used to take them all out in public, she always used to warn them beforehand, don't be little Indians while you're, while you're out there. So she wanted her boys to behave. And that was, that was her way of saying that. So that, that's how the name little Indian came about was um, mama Macrina laying down the law. Okay. So the Macrina brothers, they bought their first go-kart and subsequently made mini bikes for this famous Indy car racer. Macrina brothers bought their first go-kart and subsequently made mini bikes for this famous Indy car racer. That's right. Macrina brothers started off. One of the Macrina brothers was actually on the pit crew for this uh, Indy car and actually helped build the car. I want to say it was Regis, but uh, I, I'm not certain. Where's simple Tom when you need him? He probably knows this. Come on, guys. This one's easy. Macrina Brothers bought their first go-kart and subsequently made mini bikes for this famous IndyCar racer. Kevin, no, it wasn't uh, J.C. Agajanian. Um, he, he's Ascot fame, but it, uh, and he, he was not a racer either. Um, I think he just owned a car and promoted it. Um, 
Nope, what Mario, what an Al Unser. Come on, guys. When I, when I tell you the answer to this, you're going to go, duh. That's the easy one. Macrina Brothers made mini bikes for what famous IndyCar racer? Tom, you're almost there. Tom, you know this. I know you know this. Nope, wasn't AJ. Back in the good old days, I feel bad. Randy Blue, Troy Rutman. You guys remember the Rutman mini bikes, right? Essentially, it was the same thing as a little Indian. Looked exactly the same. Yeah, Danica Patrick. <laughs> nice wolf, man. Uh, got, got, got to love that. You guys like my ears? I'm digging these ears. I'm going to wear these tomorrow at work. That's right. So, yes, Troy Rutman and uh, Rutman Mini Bikes. Um, I don't know if you guys ever saw my little green Rutman that I uh, I sold. Um, had a rowdy little five-horse Briggs on it. And um, that that was um, – I, I, I missed that bike. I, I'd love to have it back. Um, Tom, it was Troy Rutman. So – and uh, he, he, Troy Rutman's actually from, um, or, or ha had some dealings here in law in Southern California. I don't want to tell you where the Gray Goat Garage secret studio is. Okay, um, Kevin, I, I, I do work in the Gray Goat Garage. Yes, sir. Um, no, Mike, I, I don't have a real job. Um, th th this is just my uh, my part time gig. Um, Good Lord, with all, the, with all the questions that I get all day long, it's a time and a half gig. Um, all right, where are we at? So anyway, back to the torque converters. Th think about that. The, the next time you want to experiment with some gearing changes, and, and especially the guys, the torque converters and a hopped-up engine, you know, the torque converter was, was designed, what, late 40s for flathead engines, and that's why we all crab about – you know, having to, to tilt it down so it misses the cylinder on the, on the OHV engines. Um, you know, back, back when they were designed, they uh, – <laughs> the bunny on the wall is cool too, huh, Matt? Um, back when they were designed, it was all flathead engines back then. You know, the, um, the, the support on the backside for the uh, driven – uh, would go under the gas tank was an easy deal. Bolt right up, would bolt straight, flat, done. Um, but everything was at 3,600 RPM max too. So, you know, as, as we're stressing these components, um, you know, putting an engine that'll, that'll double that RPM figure, think about gearing your engine, not for so much for top speed, but factor all that together and, Put a put a sprocket on there that will allow allow you to get there and and be in the horsepower when the driven's all the way in. Almost out of water. I'm going to have to hit that bell. Um. <laughs> yep, we're repping the LBC. So, oh, 1952. Thanks, Randy. Angelo said 1947. So what do I know? So anyway, you guys ready for one more question? Some, somebody's got to beat Randy because because Ran, Randy is um, kind of kicking some tail on all this. And at OMBWarehouse.com, we want to give those Quizzo bucks away because we love Quizzo. That's right. You know, I actually have to do homework for this. I just don't pull this stuff right off the top of my head. Uh, I'm, I'm not as smart as I look which is sad. Um, all right, this one's easy. And I, I want you guys to have the, 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 the trigger on the, fi your figure on the trigger. Um, Mo, I, I believe Randy Blue has two now. Um, you have one and Mark Lutz has one. So let, let, let's get on to the next question. I want you guys to be ready for this because um, so, yeah, so somebody will, will know what's going on here, okay? How many needle bearings are in a stock Honda GX200 connecting rod? How many needle bearings 
are in a stock Honda GX200 connecting rod. Mo, it's not 12, not 16. Appreciate all the guesses. I, I, I like where you're going with that. Um, how many needle bearings are in a stock Honda GX200 connecting rod? David Wolf, he's on it. There, there is no needle bearings in that in that connecting rod, guys. Come on, it's just the aluminum surface that rides directly on the crank on a film of oil, right? There's no there's no needle bearings in there. There's no roller bearings there. This is the connecting rod. Come on, that that was an easy question, guys. All right, all right. I I, I see you're trying, um, but but that's good. We're we're learning, you know. Those connecting rods, it, it uh, the the rod rides right on the the crankshaft. I know I have one around here somewhere that I could show you. Um, so, anyway, Randy Blue, um, I, I had a tiebreaker question, but um, I'm going to go for a bonus question now. And um, anybody that knows me knows that um, I, I'm into some different kind of things, not just bunny ears, mind you, but some different things. So I will send a special prize to the first person that uh, can name what engine this connecting rod fits. Okay? So you guys ready? So the, 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 this is one thing that, uh, that I am passionate about. This connecting rod Fits what engine? Look at the rod bolts on there. This is a monster here. What engine does this connecting rod fit? I just bought it because it's cool. I'll never use it, but I think it's cool. Simple Tom. That's right. Tom said Briggs Raptor, but um, I was going to go with Raptor or anything five horse Briggs. That's what it fits. That's a long rod for uh, a, a stroker or a real short piston. Don't, there's nothing stamped on it. I believe it's Horseman, but uh, I'm not sure. But it has bearing inserts in it. Um, see the bearings in here? The stock Honda rod doesn't have any bearings. It's aluminum that rides right on the a film of oil on the crankshaft. Anyway, back to gearing. What we're looking for, a six to one ratio. Um, we, we can vary on that. That's not an absolute. That That is how every clutch manufacturer approaches the gearing ratio. Um, they wanna see that six to one ratio because they wanna protect their name and their product, obviously. Um, we, we know from having, uh, you know, a, a, a juiced up predator or, um, you know, a, a Raptor that somebody didn't throw the rod out of the front of the engine. Um, right, David? How do you do that, dude? Who, who built that engine? Um, where was I going with this? I don't know. The hell with it. So, it, 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 anyway, um, you know, with, with uh, having more power in, in the Doodlebug guys, I get a lot. That, that will say, you know, I've got a, a 70 tooth rear sprocket and, um, you know, it, it's a wheelie machine. And, you know, if you're running a torque converter, we can tame that down with a simple sprocket on the torque converter, or we have the uh, billet adapters if you're running a standard clutch. But with, um, with the higher horsepower engines, you can get away with the five to one. You know, I, the, the, the guys that, that will light a clutch on fire with, three to one with a 420 and a 400 pounds buggy, um, you know, they should have bought a torque converter and they should have bought a sprocket anyway. So one thing that I can do for you is I can help you by helping me to email me help at ombwarehouse.com. Like us on Facebook. Simple Tom, I got to figure out what I'm going to uh, send you, but um, I, I've got plenty of goodies here, and I will make something specifically tailored to you. I've got your email address. I, uh, I'm making myself a note. Simple Tom. 
and I'll send you a special bonus prize from the Gray Goat Garage. I'll send you an email. Um, so think think about your gearing and and make the right choice. Don't don't use a a, a forty tooth <coughs> excuse me sprocket running out of Kool Aid. A, a forty tooth sprocket and an eighteen tooth clutch. You're just going to burn things up. You know, uh, if, if you had a special application and, and your entire package was geared around that, then, yeah, that's fine. You know, if you had a four-inch tall tire. Um, I, I'm sorry, Angelo, four-inch tall tire. Um, you know, that, that, that may be fine. But, you know, it, it, everything kind of follows each other. So you have to make the decision, you know, what clutch do I have? How tall is my tire? Am I running a jack shaft? Am I running a clutch or a torque converter? <coughs> With all those factors, we can figure out what, what's going to be a great starting point for you. You know, and, and just like everybody will, uh, I get a lot of messages, what jet do I need? Like, I don't know. <coughs> I've got um, a, a slightly warmed up non-governed predator that loves a 37. Um when old man Hent and I were, were goofing around with Coleman bikes, we put a 40 jet in it, ran great. So, you know, it's real hard to tell. Every engine is going to have its own need, but just, just like every engine has its own need, <clears throat> every chassis is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be dependent upon whether or not you have a jack shaft or not. And if you, if you need help with that, email me. Say, hey, Greg Goat, help at ombwarehouse.com. I'm there. I'll help you. I'll show you your options. Um, I'll do the math for you, Angelo. Put down the crayons and quit eating paste. Um, <clears throat> David, you're starting to sound like another David. Um, you know, uh, every lot of lot of predator haters out there in the vintage mini bike world. But <clears throat> for for guys like me, I like them all. I'm not a Tecumseh fan, but do I hate them? No. Will I use them? Oh heck yeah. Yeah, the, you know, I, the HS50 is a nice little engine. Um, had a Tecumseh, not the Star, but the other one. And um, that dude was a monster. Um, but Predators has taken us into the next generation of mini bikes and, and helped this entire hobby grow and grow. Um, you know, before before you could buy a $100 engine at Harbor Freight, you, uh, you had to either scrounge one off a snowblower or you bought a brand new Honda for, you know, $389 when it was on sale. Um, so th this has helped a lot of younger people get involved in the hobby. Um, we, we all kind of have a different mindset going into this hobby. Um, for me, it was to help me uh, relive my misspent youth and help me understand why I was such a juvenile delinquent. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for so many people, you know, it's about, having a little bit of freedom and, and having some fun. It's an um, inexpensive hobby. Um, th those that know 301s, 301s are boat anchors. Get out of here, Matt. Um, yeah, whatever, David. <laughs> um, it, it, it's about the, the, the freedom, the, the having fun. Um, the, the younger people, they all want to go fast. Um, when I was younger, I, I wanted to go fast too, but you know, I was always concerned about brakes. I was a little more conservative than a lot of you guys. Um, now that I'm old and fat, I, I don't go faster than my brakes will stop me. Um, and that's one thing with uh, doing hot rods for so long. Um, I, I loved my hot rods, and um, I, I sold mine two years ago. And oddly enough, I don't miss it. Um, But with that, you know, it was a very expensive hobby. It was a lot of fun while it lasted. But um, with mini bikes, best thing you can do after a hard day's work or a stressful day, hop on your mini bike and go for a little ride. That's what I do. I go chase cats through the neighborhood. So it's good, clean fun. And uh, I, I, I enjoy it. So, um, yeah, you got a bad rap here, David. You, you got you got the one. They, they saw you coming. So... A Predator engine, they're, they're, they're stupidly simple to build. Um, they're, they're a lot of fun. Um, we, we have uh, Randy Blue just built his first motor. 
and uh, got to hear it today um, via a little video that he sent me. And uh, man, it sounds good, Randy. Um, you know, I, I love my Briggs flatheads. Anybody that knows me knows I'm a flathead fan. I've, I've had all the horseman angle plug heads and actually made some metal brock heads for mine. And um, they're, they're badass little motors, but it, it just doesn't compare to, to a Predator. Um, you know, the Predator revs quicker, makes more power, and uh, is a lot cheaper to build. So anyway, that is our show for the night. Um, I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I am writing down names and taking notes. And um, I'll make sure to send none of you Christmas cards this year. Um, but I will get you all presents. Um, I'll get you the same thing that I got you last year, but just twice as much this year. Okay? It's the least I can do. So don't forget, like us on Facebook. We are ombwarehouse.com, coming to you live directly from the Gray Goat Garage in beautiful, sunny Southern California. Check this out. Oh, yeah, I got flip-flops on today because that's how we roll here. That's right. Thanks. you. I, I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for coming by. Um, don't forget, Easter is Sunday. Get your wife a card, some chocolates, and um, get her a chocolate bunny that doesn't look like this. We're out. Thank you. OMBWarehouse.com. Thanks for coming by.